Hey, what is going on guys? So I am back in St. Augustine. I made the two hour drive from Orlando last night so that I can work on the FRS. But here's the issue. I am currently waiting on the FedEx guy to deliver all of my replacement parts that I had ordered earlier this week. And I figured instead of moping around all day today that uh, I would just try to install the uh, Rocket Bunny fenders that I have. But only on the front fenders because I really don't want to cut into the quarter panel of the car just yet. But there's also the chance that I'm not even going to be able to install these fenders because if you guys remember, we had to loosen up the bolts that attached the fender just to be able to close the hood. And that basically means that the fenders themselves themselves are kind of bent and I'm really hoping that I'll be able to bend them back into place so that I could salvage these fenders instead of buying replacement ones and then spending the $400 that it costs to paint match the color that the car is. So before we jump into cutting the fenders, these are not authentic fenders. But I've literally had these fenders for the longest time. They're made of an ABS plastic, which is a lot more forgiving than fiberglass. And since it's a drift car, I'm not gonna have to worry about patching broken fiberglass with these fenders. I know there's tons of controversy on YouTube with people running fake fenders on their car, but I really hope you guys understand why I have them in the first place. It's a drift car. It's more than likely going to get damaged, and I'd much rather damage a set of cheap fenders than the real ones. Yes, I totally 100% agree that we should support authentic companies, and if I was making the money that some of these other YouTubers are making, I would totally make that decision. Keep in mind, this is only a temporary solution until I can find fenders that are already painted on eBay or Craigslist or something like that. My first priority in rebuilding this car is to be able to drift it. I don't really care how it looks. Yeah, I, okay, well, yes, I do care, but it's not my first priority. Having these fenders on will look a lot better than running them with this damage. So enough of me talking, let's jump right into the install. So I believe I have the fenders cut enough to fit the Rocket Bunny over top. I did have to use my sister's hair dryer to heat up some of the plastic, like there's a tab right underneath here that is used to connect the bumper piece that you attach. But I'm not going to be installing that little piece that goes here because that requires to cut into the bumper. And like I said, I'm not even sure that these fenders are going to work since, you know, they're bent and all. I actually ran to Ace this morning for some hardware. Now I do know a lot of you guys recommend that we used uh, riv nuts on that boosted bunny that we did the rocket bunny wing install But I just went and bought some cheap stainless hardware some nuts and bolts just to see if you know it works So now all that's left is to basically uh, Drill through the fenders probably really help if I had another hand just so I could hold the drill and drill through without making any mistakes So I'm just gonna use tape to hold it in place. I feel like that is pretty evenly placed on I'm just crossing my fingers that we're gonna have decent fitment Actually, look who just got here. It's the UPS man. Sweet. All of the replacement parts I need. Nice. So like I said, first priority is to get the car driving. I'm gonna stop doing the fenders right now. Here is basically everything unpackaged. The strut, lower control arm, camber plates, basically everything. Now I just need to piece it all together. I'll go ahead and start off by moving all of the collars and mounts over to the new strut, since, you know, they weren't damaged.
I don't have the patience to be loosening up these collars, so I quickly rigged up something. A 21 millimeter matches up over that strut quite nicely with the help from a nice little latex glove. You gotta love the outside the box thinking. I literally just spent an hour trying to get the lower spring perch off. I think the tolerance is a little bit too tight, which made it super hard to turn off. I literally had to beat the crap out of this thing. And you can see that. I actually just cleaned the threads with a pick on the inside of this collar and it is sliding on. Super easy now. You can start uh, by reassembling the driver's side coilover, and I'm going to use the passenger side for reference in terms of the height that I'm gonna run. I went ahead and used the impact to tighten up the uh, top nut. I believe I am ready to now piece the car back together. And it's actually pretty cool because PBM sent me their new sleeves that they have. These essentially get rid of these locking collars that can break and adds rigidity to this bolt, which will essentially keep it from bending this bad. Now, for the people that wreck their cars, this probably is a bad thing because if this adds rigidity, it's probably going to transfer all that energy back through the front subframe, but it's mainly for those that like to run maximum track width on their cars. Actually, look who just showed up. This is my buddy Sean in his brand new 2017 BRZ. I've never got to look at one of these in person. Wow, that's nice. He actually lives right down the road from me. I told him to come and stop by. Nacho, don't, don't get in there. Hey, get out of his car, Nacho. Get out of there. Dude, this is nice. It's got a oh my gosh. <laughs> buster, real-time power readout. So also, it has that G-force meter and yeah, all that. Yeah, it's got the G-meter, it's got a torque curve, everything. Wow, I'm jealous. Redesigned taillights, they kind of stole the design from Valenti. <laughs> right, but yeah. All LED. Nice. Everything. Nacho, will you stop that? Will you stop that? We're trying to look at this nice car. The real question I always ask everyone with new cars, will you ever drift it? Um, you know... <laughs> It depends. I've got a hundred thousand mile warranty. Okay. So I, I'm gonna respect the warranty for <laughs> right. quite a while. But if I ever have extra money, you know, right? I would consider it. Yeah. Awesome, dude. But Man, this is this is just so clean. How right. many miles on it now? Two hundred. Two hundred fresh miles. Wow. So get out. Get out of his car. Just push him off. Oh, must be nice to have that. <laughs> so you've got a power readout. Uh -huh. It's not like real time. Like if you modify the car, right. it won't change. But I like to have it on the torque curve just because, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, yeah. look, there's the dip. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. infamous torque dip. So I'm sorry about that. It is dark outside now because Sean and I were literally talking about cars for like an hour or two. And see, I love that because he got a brand new BRZ and there's so much knowledge that I can share with him. And I just, I just love talking about cars. But with that said, uh, uh, I think it is time to eat dinner. My dad got home from work. Hopefully he is ready to work on the car. Are you? Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I'm trying to get my mom to help us out with the car too. I don't think she wants to, but uh, she made dinner for us. <laughs> you gotta love being able to come home, work on your car, and then have a nice home cooked meal. Our stomachs are full. I believe we are ready to get back out, work into the car. Of course, my dad has his inspector suit on. So now what I need to finish doing is making sure that I have matched up the lengths on each one of these ends so that I can make sure that I have the same track width on both sides of the car. So we've gotten a decent amount done for the night. Right now I'm basically just having the issue of adjusting the tie rod ends so that, you know, the car isn't completely out of alignment. That is definitely the most annoying part that we're experiencing right now. So my dad and I will tackle it first thing in the morning.
Okay, so it is the next day. I've been working on the car all morning. I haven't even bothered to film because I really just wanted to get the car done. I have the front suspension on completely. Um, it might need a little bit more adjustment in the tie rods, which is why I spent so long just trying to get it right. And I'm not sure if it is 110% because I haven't driven it yet, but my dad made a good point. He wanted me to pull the wheel off on the rear because we'd already put it on and I was getting ready to take it out for a spin. And I'm sure you guys know that the wheel kind of sat sunken into the fender compared to the passenger side. So I went ahead, removed the coil over just to do some inspection. Um, first off, you can see how the arm is slightly bent, so it doesn't really allow us to remove the coil over. And additionally, I think that the strut itself might be broken because it didn't have this much play before. So I'll definitely have to be ordering another one of these. So we have been busy trying to get the fenders installed since, you know, we can't really finish the car. I have a one side installed. My dad recommended that we just run and get rivets to make our lives 10 times easier for the install of the fender. It's a pretty straightforward process. But I, yeah, I was definitely able to salvage the passenger side fender. UPS just stopped by and uh, gave me my my replacement headlight bracket. Uh, shout out to my friend Robin for actually messaging me on Snapchat and saying that I'm more than likely going to need it if I cannot get the bumper to uh, fit back on. So hopefully Robin was right and this uh, bracket will uh, solve that issue. So my dad and I are basically gonna do the last thing we have to do today. Um, since, you know, we can't really do much else without that uh, rear coil over, uh, but we're just going to get this uh, fender installed. And for those of you that don't know, Victor came to join us. Thank Yay. you. <laughs> I put in so much work for you guys. <laughs> yeah, you did. Victor, talk to the camera. I don't know what to say. I'm on the spotlight. Uh, that's, you gotta say something clever, that way you can get like, uh, um, some likes for Alan on, on there. <laughs> uh, if you're just gonna say something stupid, then uh, just, just don't say anything. I'm not gonna say anything, because I don't know what to say. <laughs> you're, you're saying something. I'm on the spotlight. You're already saying no. something. I'm, I'm running away. <laughs> Got anything clever to say yet? We're installing these rock bunnies to look like <laughs> TJ. They're replicas, just like his. <laughs> if Alan gets any dislikes, I think it's gonna be because of you. Oh no. <laughs> so we got the fenders on and we managed to bend the fender down some so we could get the hood to close. Took a little bit of muscle, but uh, it managed to uh, go in just fine. Oh, well, wait, I still need to bolt it down. So Victor had a good point. We spent a good 30 minutes trying to get the bumper to fit back onto the car. And the bumper would just not clip in to the new bracket we got. So Victor took a step back and looked at the car from a distance. And if you see, the right tail light is kind of cocked up a little bit compared to the left. Not sure if you guys can see it in video, but it is definitely noticeable in person. So that pretty much means that this whole left corner might be bent. The frame should be perfectly fine. Well, that is a pretty big bummer, knowing that uh, there's more stuff that I'm gonna have to replace on the car. But uh, that's just uh, part of the drift life. You break it, you fix it, and you go back out, drift, and and then break it again. Well, guys, wish me luck. Victor, thank you for coming over and helping for the 30 minutes that you came. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Mm. Peace. Peace. <laughs>